Welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a little experiment with epoxy. We're going to find out how opaque mica tinted epoxy is. And I know it depends on how much mica powder you put in, but who wants to dump a whole bunch of mica powder into something if you don't have to? So we'll start off this experiment by cutting the scrap piece of plywood into some squares. Before we pour the epoxy over it, we'll get some latex paint, a black and a white, and we'll cover each square half, half black, half white. That'll let us know after we pour the epoxy if you can see through it or not. You'll have that nice black white hard line there. I think that'll do the trick just fine. That'll show us how opaque the epoxy is with the mica powder mixed in. Now all we need to do is figure out a good ratio to start with. I've seen plenty of guys add mica powder to their epoxy. It doesn't take a lot to darken it up a lot. So I'm thinking about using a teaspoon per gallon of epoxy. Now I don't want to mix up a whole gallon of epoxy to cover one little board. So we're going to mix up 16 ounces in this little container with an eighth of a teaspoon. This is a quarter teaspoon, it's the smallest one I have, the smallest measuring spoon I have. So we're gonna take this, level it, put it on a piece of paper, cut it in half, and put half of it in 16 ounces. That gets us the same ratio. Eighth of a gallon, eighth of a teaspoon. Let's mix that up, pour it across one of these boards, and see how it looks. Here's my little trick to getting my epoxy up to temperature before I pour it. I stick it in a garbage bag and then stick it in hot water. Now the garbage bag protects the label from getting destroyed by the water so I can read it later if I need to. Check the temperature on the epoxy, 73.6. Eight ounces of hardener. Get eight ounces of resin in here. Start stirring our epoxy up. Three minutes of stirring. Alrighty. Get some mica powder in here. Now that barely tinted that at all. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get another quarter teaspoon and put it in that mix, which is sitting at 13 and a half ounces. There's a little bit of a divot there to make up for the lack of epoxy. So if I'm thinking about this mix right here correctly, this should be equivalent to about three teaspoons per gallon. We can already tell that one teaspoon per gallon is hardly anything at all. Three teaspoons per gallon is really thick, it's really opaque. We'll let this set and we'll let it self level and kind of drip off the edges and see what it turns out as. So here they are with a little more light. This is one teaspoon per gallon. Now, as you can see in the white, you can hardly see anything. But in the black, 
it kind of makes the grain of the wood pop out. So we did get a little bit of an effect on the black. Now I didn't try and level this. You can see the reflection of the light in there. I didn't try and level this or pop the bubbles or anything. This is just straight poured out. I realized it was too thin on the white side, so I left it alone. After mixing more mica powder into the epoxy, we get a lot better coverage. You can still see a little bit of the wood grain kind of popping out right here. So if you're looking for that effect, you'll still have that effect, but it'll be a lot darker. It's still not a lot of mica powder per gallon of epoxy. So this gives me a really good idea of how much mica powder I need to mix in the epoxy to get this effect. Now this is a brown mica powder and our project has more of a brown background color, so we need to test it on three different background colors. We've got a light, a medium, and a dark brown, and I made another black tile to go with them. So let's go mix up some epoxy. I'm thinking two teaspoons per gallon, and we'll pour these other four tiles and see how they turn out. Something to keep in mind, if you brush your paint on, you're going to have brush marks. You want to roll your epoxy the same direction as your brush marks. I wasn't super careful with these test patterns, so I got a little bit of dirt in them, a couple hairs, something that I would definitely pay attention to before I did my final product. So 24 hours later, they're completely dry and I brought them back inside the shop so we'd have more light to see them. Black. Dark brown. Medium brown. and a light brown beige color. So I wish I had better lighting and video equipment to show you guys exactly how these tiles turned out, but I'm not a professional YouTuber yet. Maybe someday I'll get there. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can share this video with a friend, share it on your favorite social media, or you can click on the Amazon affiliate link in the description. It won't cost you a penny, but it gives us a slim percentage to be the ones to send you there. If nothing else, I hope this gets your creative juices flowing and gets you an idea of what you can do with epoxy, mica powder, and the background colors behind it. Until next time, go make something. I wonder what I can make out of that leftover epoxy.